Hello, everyone. Um, very pleased to be here today, and I think I'm probably talking to or preaching to the converted because a lot of the companies that presented today that are SMEs are um, already plugged into the IREP network, so that's very encouraging to say. Anyway, for those of you who don't know about uh, the National Research Council's Industrial Research Assistance Program, I'm here to tell you a little bit about that. So from a very high level perspective, um, IREP supports the growth of small and medium sized enterprises and that's really firms under 500 employees that are Canadian owned or controlled. And more specifically we work with firms that are innovative. They're either working on an innovative technology that translates into product development or perhaps helps them with their manufacturing or perhaps with some of the services that they provide to their clients. So it doesn't have to be a product at the end of it, but it does need to have innovation in the sense that it is giving them a competitive advantage in the marketplace. We recognize that being innovative is taking a bit of a risk, because after all, it probably hasn't been done before. Even incremental innovation has a certain amount of risk associated with it. And so IAP really here is to try to mitigate some of that risk by some of these things that you see here. First one is technical and business advisory services. So we can work with firms to look at their project management skills. Do they have all the people necessary in order to do that? Um, review business plans, marketing plans, etc. And I'll get more into what some of our advisory services are all about in the next slide. Um, we provide networking opportunities and linkages, so that can be business to business, linking certain expertise in, in one com um, particular type of company with perhaps the company that's looking at developing something. We can also link them into labs at the National Research Council or AITF. And finally, we can link them in with our broad network within IRAP. Um, we are a national organization, and so just because the expertise doesn't um, exist here in Alberta, perhaps we can find it elsewhere in the country. We have access to information specialists that can provide competitive technical intelligence. And finally, we have fi financial assistance, and that'll be one of my last slides where I'll talk about the different programs that we've got. So how do you get a client that's perhaps a small, micro-sized company that's maybe in a startup phase, all the way to the top right-hand side of the screen that is a medium-sized, mature, stable company and hiring lots of people, which is what we like to see. Um, because SMEs are the heart of the Canadian economy, um, I think StatsCan says that SMEs account for 80% of new jobs and over 80% of new technologies. And so we're really here to embrace um, that innovation strategy and that commercialization strategy. It can often be a long and bumpy road. Tech development is a very small part of what we're trying to achieve here. We understand that the tech development is the enabler, but really the larger challenges that our SME clients face are things like understanding your market, the challenges, or sorry, the channels to this market, what is your significant competitive advantage and how can you differentiate yourself from your competitor? Are you taking into account good design practice? Is the product intuitive to use? Would somebody want to buy this? Why would they want to buy that over something else? When do you raise funds? How do you raise funds? And what would be a good timing? Managing IP. Those are all things that come along this innovation strategy that we can help with. So one of the big advantages that I believe IRAP offers is, is the ITA. We are considered field staff. So we spend about half our time in our offices and half our time's out with our clients. So that means I can go and sit with my, um, with my client firms that have engineering groups and I can talk to them about good design process. Um, I can go up to the manufacturers and talk to them about flow in the shop floor and how can they make things more productive. Um, across the country we have about 240 ITAs and we all have various different um, backgrounds in both education as well as industrial experience. I think we try to hire people that have at least 10 years of industrial experience and many of us have been small business owners and so we understand the pain and the challenges of wearing many different hats as you go along this innovation channel. Um, we are located in 147 different offices or 100 communities, so we have an ITA in Red Deer, we have an ITA in Lethbridge, and both in Edmonton and Calgary we have about 12 or 13 ITAs each, and there we sit um, in different locations within our community. Um, I'm located at the AITF building, we've got about two or three ITAs at the SAIT building, and as well as Innovate Calgary. 
And we try to embed ourselves within the community so that we have a broader outreach to different types of inventors and other small firms. So what sort of money support do we give? Um, a broad one is a contributions to organizations or innovation collaborators that really serve a bigger SME community. So they might provide um, training on how to write a business plan or a go-to-market plan. Um, so it's a one-on-many. And so we have a fair number of those that are out there. The last three are um, project specific to firms. So the first one, and that's the lion's share of the, the projects that we get out, give out and their contributions to firms for innovative R&D. So I could probably stress there that's a small R, big D. We're not really interested in university research. We're past that point. However, we still want to see a bit of technical unknown. Again, we're looking for that innovative flair, that pushing the, the leading edge um, type project. Um, probably the average size in Canada is about $100,000, although I would argue in Alberta it's probably higher because it costs more to do business here. Um, the second program that we've got is the Youth Employment Program. Um, that one looks at getting youth that have a degree or a diploma in hand that have recently graduated and we can provide up to $30,000 for about 6 to 12 months depending um, to get a, a youth into, into a company. Um, it's, it's really enjoyable to see when I call up a company three or four years later and ask them how it's going and the youth that we put in at that point is still employed there and an active part of their engineering community so that's really good to see. The Digital Technology Adoption Pilot Program is new for us, uh, DTAP, and it is, like it says, a pilot program. We're into the second year of a, of a three-year project there, and that's really to look at improving the productivity within Canadian firms. Um, I think the Conference Board of Canada did a study that if we would have kept up with the U.S. on productivity in the last decade, our corporate profits would have been up 40% and government revenue up 30%. So those numbers are fairly staggering and we're really here to see what we can do to improve productivity through the adoption of um, technology. So it's not adopting technology for the sake of it, it really has to have a productivity improvement um, a reference to it. So firms that we're dealing with here typically are different than the ones of our, of our innovative R&D type clients. Um, we're working with a lot of manufacturing clients. They're implementing ERP or they're migrating from 2D to 3D CAD. So those are some of the projects that we're seeing there. We're fully subscribed on the DTAP for this year, but we still have um, some room on the, on the R&D projects. So 2012. 2012 has been a really exciting year for us because in the last budget they actually doubled IRAP's budget. We went from a $110 million organization to a $220 million organization. We are struggling in Calgary a little bit to get that money out because like many firms in Calgary we're understaffed. We're having a hard time finding good ITAs. Um, the, um, the Sorry, the Canadian Innovation Commercialization Program, CACP, uh, we're not um, administering that on behalf of Public Works, but we do evaluate um, the people that, uh, or the firms that uh, sign up for that, and that has been made a permanent program. And that is really to try to um, continue to support our companies over the chasm, the commercialization chasm that was talked about earlier um, today. So they will buy your first prototype for you and they will also do some testing on it and give you feedback. And that program has been very, very well received. Um, the National Research Council has also been asked to create a concierge service. Um, we don't really know what that looks like yet. Um, certainly we don't want to duplicate the efforts that have been going on in the individual provinces. For example, the government of Alberta has a connector service. We don't want to duplicate that. We want to enhance it or augment it. So we're still trying to figure out exactly what that looks like. So there you go. That's our total number across the, the country. Our website, if anybody would like to talk to me, I have my business cards.